morning. Please join us in singing our entrance hymn, number 554 in Breaking Bread. Come, Christians, join to sing. Good morning. Today we offer this Holy Eucharist for the rest of the soul of Jack Tobin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do. In my most gracious soul, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as a ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days... The Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grave that I must go down and see whether or not their actions fully correspond to the cry against them that comes to me. I mean to find out. While Abraham's visitors walked on farther toward Sodom, the Lord remained standing before Abraham. Then Abraham drew nearer and said, Will you sweep away the innocent with the guilty? Suppose there were 50 innocent people in the city. Would you wipe out the place rather than spare it for the sake of the 50 innocent people within it? Far be it from you to do such a thing to make the innocent die with the guilty, so that the innocent and the guilty would be treated alike. Should not the judge of all the world act with justice? The Lord replied, If I find 50 innocent people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke up again. See how I am presuming to speak to my Lord, though I am but dust and ashes. What if there are five less than 50 innocent people? Will you destroy the whole city because of those five? He answered, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. But Abraham persisted, saying, What if only Forty are found there. He replied, I will forbear doing it for the sake of the forty. Then Abraham said, Let not my Lord grow impatient if I go on. What if only thirty are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it if I can find but thirty there. Still, Abraham went on. Since I have thus dared to speak to my Lord, what if there are no more than 20? The Lord answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 20. But he still persisted. Please, let not my Lord grow angry if I speak up this last time. What if there are at least 10 there? He replied, 
for the sake of those ten, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. to you, O oh Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple. of your kindness and your truth, for you have been great above all things, your name and your promise. When I call, you answer me, you build up strength. exalted, yet the lowly he sees, and the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk amid distress, you preserve me against the anger of my enemies. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you were buried with him in baptism, 
in which you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And even when you were dead in transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he brought you to life along with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, obliterating the bond against us with its legal claims, which was opposed to us. He also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, Say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us. And do not subject us to the final test. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey, and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, If he does not get up to give the visitor the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish? Or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven Give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. The Gospel of the Lord.
At the center of our gospel today, it's prayer. And the prayer that Jesus teaches his disciples, more than being something that they have to repeat over and over, it's a compromise that they have to leave. The gospel begins by saying that Jesus was praying in a certain place. Already we see that this prayer that he teaches them is to be done everywhere. And from the parable of the, of the friend coming to knock at night, we understand that it's much, it must be done, it must be done all time. Hence, prayer is not just something that we repeat, but something that we live everywhere and at all times. The first word from the prayer that Jesus teaches his disciples is Father. And Father is not just a word. It's a relationship. It's a person. When we were kids and we called out to our father or our mother, it was not a floating word that would come to our aid. It was a person who rushed to our knees. We too are not just words. We are persons whose first relationship was that of a son. You did not come into, into this world being somebody's best friend or somebody perfect husband or wife. You are first of all sons and daughters. The first compromise contained in this prayer is to live as sons and daughters of the Father. Living as sons and daughters also requires a compromise of purification. The name Father was never revealed in the Old Testament, but even when the divine name of the Lord was revealed to Moses, when he approached the burning, burning bush, the Lord required him to remove his sandals because the place where he was standing was holy ground. Calling out to the Father requires a purification of our lives because the name we're calling out is holy ground. Moreover, no one with, without a pure heart can consciously and without fear say, thy kingdom come. Because he knows that with the coming of the kingdom also comes judgment. No one with a, a pure heart can really wish for the coming of his kingdom and judgment. It's just like when we were young, maybe, and maybe we crashed our dad's car. Maybe, not, not, not saying that me, just, you know. Our first impulse was not to say, Hey, Dad, come, look at this. I crashed your car. Hopefully not, because that, that would be messed up, but anyway. It was, oh boy, am, am I going to, where am I going to find a rock big enough to hide this? Only with a constant purification of our life, lives can we call out to the Father without fear of the coming of his kingdom and reverence for the holiness of his, of his name. From the parable, we learn that prayer is to be done at all times and without ceasing. Prayer is the bread of the soul and of life. Somebody can live several weeks without food, a couple of days without water, but only a few minutes without air. Our prayer life and its compromises must be an ending because just like we die when we stop breathing, so too do we start dying when we stop praying. The friend teaches us to call to the Father without ceasing. As the Greek text says, the friend was, knowing, was knocking on the door shamelessly because of two things. He shouldn't be ashamed that he didn't have anything to offer his guests, thus failing as, at hospitality, and secondly, that his kingdom was going to, that his knocking was going to awake his family. However, Jesus tells us that tells us to knock on the Father's door unshamelessly. 
do not hide the crushed car out of shame. For if your father was willing to forgive, how much more will your father in heaven forgive you? Finally, Jesus tells us about the reward of prayer. The last part of our gospel today invites us to imagine the father, the father's goodness by comparing him to our biological fathers. If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good, good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Here, Jesus makes it clear that no matter how many things we ask for, the greatest gift that he will give us is the Holy Spirit. Because it's the Holy Spirit that moves us to cry out to the Father. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we, we may live out the compromises of, the, of the, our Father, living as sons who are constantly purifying the hearts from every malice, to cry out to the Father without fear and reverence for his holy name. To ask for something in prayer, my brothers and sisters, you already know this, doesn't mean that we're going to get it. When we are suffering, when we are in pain, and we cry, cry out to, to the Lord, and we ask him to take away this pain, and the pain doesn't go away, doesn't mean that he's not listening to our, listening to our prayers. Prayer is not magic. It's a relationship. And that's the reason why sometimes it takes longer for our prayers to, to be response. But don't doubt, don't ever doubt that even, even on your darkest moments, God has been there with you. Even when you felt you were going through a desert, a spiritual desert, don't doubt that God was walking and was suffering with you. Today, the gospel is inviting us to get closer to him. Closer in our relationship. Closer in the way that we talk to him. Because if it's hard for us to talk to God as a friend, maybe we need to start getting to know more Jesus. Because if we see him just as this divine person that is unreachable, well, of course, how can I be in contact with someone like that? We need to, we, 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 we need to learn to see in, in God this friend, this human friend that we can talk to that we can cry to, that we can fight with. Why not? He is real. He is our friend. And I would like to leave, leave you with this question. How many times have you come to talk to your friend? How many times have you decided to give five minutes of your time any day of the week to come and to talk to the Blessed Sacrament? Or Fridays, as you may know, we have Eucharist Adoration, Eucharistic Adoration. How many times have you come? I'm not judging, but if we want to have a relationship, we need to know the other person that we are making this friendship with. Oh, Father, I pray in my house. And the gospel says that I can do that. Yes, but that, that's not enough. How many times have you decided to come and to worship your Lord? The same God that we ask 
in prayers for something that we need. If, it, if it's because of your health, condition, problems, that, that's fine, God understands. But if you're not ill, if you can drive, if you can come, why are we not doing that? Sometimes the problem is that maybe we haven't started a relationship with God. And that's why it's harder for us to talk to him. Think about it. If you're serving in any apostolate in any way, that's good. God bless you for that. Do you come to pray? No, I do all my prayers at home. I'm happy. Good. That's not enough. Our Father, who art in heaven. Yes, but this is the house of our Father. And just as we go and, and we visit Grandma, Grandpa house, we must also come and visit our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the invitation that the gospel is making to all of us. To have a relationship, a friendship with our Lord. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. Dear brothers and sisters, gather as one to celebrate the good things we have received from our God. Let us ask him to prompt in us prayers that are worthy of his hearing. That the church, which daily prays for the coming of God's kingdom, may work tirelessly to open pathways for the kingdom's justice to be established among us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to be ministers of reconciliation, that we may witness to God's mercy by offering forgiveness to one another and by seeking forgiveness when we have injured someone, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For persistence in prayer, that the Spirit will teach us how to authentically express our deepest needs to God in prayer and give us strength never to grow tired of calling upon God for assistance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are facing trials and difficulty, that God's Spirit will strengthen the hearts of all Christians who are imprisoned or persecuted for their faith and fill them with courage. We pray to the Lord. For all who need 
daily bread, that God will open new opportunities for them to access food and touch the hearts of all who have an abundance to share more freely. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing of racism and prejudice, that all people may look upon one another as sisters and brothers and work for the betterment of one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the seriously ill in our community and among our family members and friends may be gifted with the comfort of loved ones and the healing touch of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sorrowing may be lifted up in hope and all our beloved dead come to rest in the forever embrace of our God's love and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight, the Lord, so that we may receive for your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merits. Through Christ our Lord. Please join us in singing our operatory hymn, number 461, Be Still and Know That I Am God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the power working of your grace, 
these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passing of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and our angels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we send the hem of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took the bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the, light, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant free peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And your spirit. And let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. Please join us in singing the communion hymn, Oh How Blessed, number 740.
Rejoice and be glad, be loved of the Lord. The kingdom of heaven is yours. The first shall be last, the last shall be first. For such is the wisdom of God. Rejoice and be glad, be loved of the Lord. The kingdom of heaven is yours. The first shall be last, the last shall be first. For such 
us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Just as a reminder, uh, registration are still going on, so if you have any a child within the ages to be confirmed, to have the first communion, uh, to be baptized, please stop by the office. We have some forms in the back. Uh, you also can take them and fill them out and bring them back. And also, if you remember last week, weekend, we have a... Uh, young man that came here to to talk to you at the end of the of the mass uh, his name is Cesar Cesar and he is going back into college uh, next weekend and he's going to be working already uh, in this missionary field uh, he's going to be in charge of uh, young young adults young men of his own age it's just an amazing uh, apostolate that he is going they we, he was telling me, I, I talked to him, they wake up at 5, they pray, they pray at 5, for God's sake. And I wake up at 6, but not 5. They pray, they go to Mass every day, and they try, they're trying to be missionaries, and at the same time, they're studying, you know. So, uh, please keep him in your prayers, offer your rosaries, offer your daily prayers for him so that he may continue discerning his vocation. And also, if you still have that million dollars just collecting dust, give half to me. No. If you can, if you can support him in any economical way, please do. Uh, we appreciate all the support and hopefully we can help him so he can, may continue serve, serving the Lord through this ministry. Uh, if you have any questions, please, uh, he's, gonna be, he's in the back, so just say hi or, you know, just tell him that you will pray for him. Please stand. And also, there's donuts and some goodies. Please go to the coffee hours, because otherwise I'll eat them. I'm not kidding, I will eat them, so please go and take some. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful morning. Please join us in singing our recessional hymn, Oh Bless the Lord, number 560. <laughs> Bless the Lord, the God of our salvation, God of strength and of refuge sure. Oh, bless the Lord, the God in every nation, over all the earth. Oh, bless the Lord, highest heavens above, bless the Lord, glorify his name. Sun in the sky, moon and stars in the night, worship and praise. Oh, bless the Lord, the God of our salvation, rock of strength and a refuge sure. Oh, bless the Lord, the God in every nation.
strength.